Kogi State's judiciary workers, under the aegis of Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, carrying placards with different inscriptions at the front gate of the magistrate court in Lokota, the state capital. They are on a peaceful protest against an alleged plot by the state governor, Yahaya Belo, to remove the chief judge of the state, Justice Nasiru Ajana, from office. The chairman of the union, Comrade Emmanuel Waniko, says the group is resolute in its fight for justice. Any attempt to bring the hollow chamber of the state judiciary to dispute through this glaring and obvious misgovernance in the state by illegally pronouncing the removal of the honorable chief judge will be shortly resisted. All efforts to speak to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Matthew Kolawale, on the matter proved abortive. Reacting to the allegation, the Director General, Media and Publicity to the Governor, describes the claim as baseless. Well, by believing such a rumor, uh, I think we'll be, we'll be a lot disappointed that um, uh, a judicial arm of government that is supposed to be law interpreters will be peddling a, a rumor that, that smacks of gross unconstitutionality. For the vice chairman, North Central of the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, there are laid down procedures for the removal of the chief judge of the state. If there is any you know, uh, misconduct on the part of any chief judge, it should be written and addressed to the NJC. The NJC will look into it, and if such petition uh, has merit, the chief judge will be recommended for, for removal. The executive and judiciary in Kogi State have been at loggerheads on the issue of workers' payroll data, a situation that led to the judiciary embarking on strike for months now. All right, joining us uh, for the focus segment right about now from our Buja studio is the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria National Vice President, North Central, Mr. Daniel Adinoy. Uh, thank you for joining us on News Across Nigeria. Thank you for having me in the studio. All right, uh, so give us a background into this current crisis, you know, between the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, the Kogi State chapter, and of course the uh, Kogi State government. Of course, we understand it's, it seems to be uh, all about a uh, payroll uh, data, but what more can you tell us? Well, that is what we have on the surface, because they, they were owing us about five months uh, subvention. Uh, that is, the judiciary of Kogi State was last paid in June. So they came up with this issue of uh, pay parade or um, table payment, as they call it, so that the judiciary should submit their payroll for ongoing pay parade, which is meant for the civil servant. And we did reply that um, as an arm of government, we cannot take part in such an exercise as we have our own um, way of uh, taking care of our... Uh, we have an internal mechanism for checking ourselves and that um, it is unconstitutional for the executive to conduct such um, an exercise in the judiciary. And even if anything is to be done in the judiciary at all, I think it is better for the governor and the head of court, which is the, the chief judge, to even discuss on that. But um, we just saw a letter that asking us to submit a payroll for the ongoing pay parade, which we replied through the chief registrar of high court. And since then, nothing was heard. They did not give us subvention. We were not communicated again, and uh, at a point when uh, it became practically impossible for staff to go to work, or uh, because no money to feed, to not to talk of transporting themselves to office, the court, the judiciary has no money to buy stationery because they were not funded. So, like I said, that as, as at that time we are already six months down, so we couldn't do anything and. All we could do as a union for our members, in order not to subject them to hardship, is to ask them to stay at home pending the time the state government we, or the, the governor will find it necessary to fund the judiciary by paying our subvention through which the salaries of the workers will be paid and right. the overhead. 
All right, so, but, and that has been the situation of things. All right, but you, you, one may well, uh, wonder, um, with, with this uh, exercise, I mean, this biometric data capturing um, that the state government uh, really wants to, um, should I say, tap into, you know, for, for the judiciary workers, um, don't you think it's, it's, it's a good initiative? I mean, is there more to this verification that you would like to uh, reveal on this platform? Like I said earlier, that is just, uh, that is what they are saying on the surface. That is the position of uh, the government on the surface. But there is more to it. We have an onion or um, a donor situation, as we used to say it in the, in the conflict analysis, where you have the outer layer as the position, the middle layer as the interest of the parties, then the core layers as the needs. So, but what we normally see, or the outsiders will see, is the position they have maintained, which is the data capturing they are talking about. To them, they mean well, they want to know this, but whatever, however beautiful is their intention, what, when it is illegal, then such a thing cannot be condoned in the judiciary. However, I mean, uh, negligible, however trivial they think it is, any illegality cannot stay when it comes to issue of judiciary because the law make provision on how judiciary should be checked. The law says, give us our money, then send auditors to audit. And they've been doing that. This thing has been on for the past term. Um, I mean, let me say since the creation of the state, we have uh, an edict to that effect, edit 1991, says subvention should be given to judiciary on monthly basis or quarterly. So, and the successive governors has been respecting it. They've been paying us subvention. Even the, this present administration, since the Azum office, they've been following suit, but all of a sudden, because they have their ulterior motive, which they have uh, succeeded in achieving today. All right, Mr. So they, uh, they just want to get at the CJ. All right, Mr. So Dino, that is it. They just want to get at the CJ. So, so how, can, how best can this crisis be resolved? Because, you know, like you said, it's been dragging on for quite a while. Now, how best can we resolve this you know, in the interest of all the judiciary workers in Kogi State? Instead of resolving the crisis, the governor is even making things worse. Because as at today, that was even the reason why we protested yesterday, because we had it, which the, the chief press secretary said that judiciary is peddling on rumors. But today, the assembly actually sat and recommended the CJ for removal. So which means, instead of finding a way around how to resolve the matter, it's even going worse. Because I don't see how an assembly can sit down, despite the subsisting cost order, asking them to stay action on, on that. They, went, they ignored that court order. They went ahead and sat today, recommend the CJ for, for governor's removal, which is unconstitutional. The only body that is vested with such power is the National Judicial Council. The governor has petitioned the CJ to the National Judicial Council. I don't know why he's impatient. It then means they actually want to achieve their aim, whether by crook or hook means. They want to achieve their aim, not minding the illegality. So right, with Mr. that Daniel kind Adinoe. of environment, how do you even think of settlement? All right, Mr. Daniel Adino, you will have to end it there. Thank you so much for your thoughts. And the National Vice President, North Central, Mr. Daniel Adino, uh, giving us his thoughts on the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, uh, Kogi State Chapter, and, of course, the Kogi State Government. Thank you so much again for your thoughts.